Good, hello, this is Frank Fortunato. Welcome to CADEX TV. This is a broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, August 11, 2011. We've got some interesting news today. Apparently, uh, the government of David Cameron in the United Kingdom has decided that they are going to pay for all legitimate, genuine riot claims from all the dis civil disturbances that have been going on for the past several nights. Uh, the Prime Minister said that the Association of British Insurers now expects that the cost of claims will be around 200 million pounds. That would be approximately 330 million U.S. The government, in the most telling sign to date that they're going to pay the claims, has extended the deadline for riot claims to be submitted to police authorities up to 42 days from the previous 14 days. This is the clearest signal yet that they expect to pick up a substantial part of the bill. In a statement to the House of Commons made today, Prime Minister Cameron said, I can confirm that any individual, homeowner, or business that has suffered damage to or loss of their buildings or property as a result of rioting can seek compensation under the Riot Damages Act, even if uninsured. The government will ensure that the police have the funds they need to meet the cost of any legitimate claims. Business interruption claims, however, which are expected to make up a significant part of the final claims bill for insurers are not under the remit of the Riot Damages Act. Cameron told the Parliament that he'd received assurances from insurers that claims will be dealt with as quickly and constructively as possible. He said, on repairing the damages, I can confirm that uh, anybody who has suffered damage or lost their buildings can seek compensation even if uninsured. The uh, British Insurance Association said now the spotlight is on the industry. We're going to do everything we can to help people and businesses. One theme that has been being played in the American TV uh, news shows in the morning, today especially, was a bit of a sense that the uh, newscasters had been detecting from the UK citizenry that this type of event in England, or London specifically, in Birmingham and elsewhere, would not have happened in the United States because the police would have put a stop to it. Interesting couple of comments from the Prime Minister today. He rejected opposition demands from Ed Miliband, the Labour leader, that he review cuts to spending on policing. Uh, Mr. Miliband called on the Prime Minister during a session in Parliament today to think again about reducing police numbers by 30,000 cops across the country as the government seeks to uh, narrow their budget deficit. Um, according to Mr. Cameron, in response, the planned spending cuts are totally achievable without any reductions in visible policing. He said 7,000 trained officers are employed in back office jobs. We will still be able to surge as many police into the streets as we have in recent days. More than 1,500 people, of course, have been arrested around England and more than 500 charged since the looting and rioting began on August 6th. The London Metropolitan Police actually managed to increase the number of officers on the streets from 6,000 to 16,000. The Prime Minister said that the disorder presented the police with a new and unique challenge that they initially mishandled. He said there were simply far too few police deployed on the streets and the tactics they were using weren't working. Police initially, quote, treated it too much as a public order issue rather than seeing it as a criminal one. Cameron then said he would look at whether there are tasks that the Army could undertake better that would free up more police in the front line. And as an afterthought, the uh, Home Secretary ordered the cancellation of all police vacation in order to counter the threat of uh, continuing unrest. In the United States today, the stock futures are up after a disastrous day yesterday. Stock futures are up today because the unemployment uh, filings for the last week dipped down to a four-month low, about 395,000. Yesterday's uh, barrage on the stock market was due to fears that uh, uh, the European uh, sovereign debt crisis was continuing to spread. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but there were fears that there, it had extended to France. All of this, of course, is psychological. Swiss-based Zurich Financial Service has posted a uh, business operating profit of about $2.1 billion for the first half. It's down a little bit from $2.3 billion at the same time last year. Part of it is due to a gain of $440 million on the sale of shares in New China Life. That pushed the net income attributable to shareholders up from uh, $1.64 billion to $1.96 billion. 
The business operating profit, however, was down 20% year on year to $1.1 billion. They noted the addition of uh, 500 million claims in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. There was a $200 million loss from the tornado and storms in the U.S., and another $80 million loss from the uh, aftershock that hit Christchurch in June. The combined ratio also increased from 98.0 up to 99.3. France uh, gets tough, apparently, with people who spread rumors. The market regulator is warning of sanctions against anyone who fuels or profits from rumors that have fed to the two-day sell-off, wiping billions off the market value of France's banks. Regulators said in a statement this morning that, quote, the regular functioning of markets is altered by the spreading of unfounded rumors concerning financial assets listed in Paris. Translation, stop running on the stock of Société Générale. It warned that spreading such baseless information or profiting from it can lead to sanctions. Société Générale plunged yesterday and fell again today on more rumors about its health. Uh, the renewed bout of jitters comes despite assurances from policymakers and credit ratings agencies, as well as uh, highlighting anxiety over Europe's debt crisis. The Finnish paper company Alstrom is ending up picking up about 500,000 euros from its insurers during the first half of the year for losses it incurred at its Laveria plant in Brazil. It got flooded out as a result of severe thunderstorms and heavy rain, caused considerable damage to the uh, facility, which manufactured filtration materials for the transportation industry. It came fully back online in early February. It's located about 60 miles uh, from Sao Paulo. Um, Alstrom announced that uh, the insurance will cover the majority of its financial losses. And off the coast of Africa, near the Cape Verde Islands, in the place where hurricanes usually start, there's finally some activity. Take a look at this. You'll see three tropical disturbances. The one on your most uh, extreme left along the American coast is the remnants of the storm that was bouncing around the Caribbean. That's fading. Look over on the right, all the way to the uh, eastern Atlantic off Cape Verde, you'll see two tropical depressions. The one that's in the center of the screen is uh, picking up speed and moving toward the west. That only has a 20% chance of uh, becoming a, uh, a tropical storm. The one on the right um, has a 30% chance. Now that has a much longer way to go until it would make landfall anywhere in North America or in the Caribbean. However, all that water over which it will pass is warm water. Now, warm water is what feeds tropical storms and what leads to hurricane. It's getting to be the time of the season. As August continues to go on and the heat continues to come and the water continues to increase in temperature, the warmth increases and the potential for uh, hurricanes continues to rise. We'll keep an eye on these two, especially the one on the right. It doesn't have a name yet and hopefully it won't materialize into a uh, tropical disturbance, but we will watch it. That's all the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.